Hello. Who's Hello? talking? Hi, how you doing? Oh, oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. One second, actually, it's still loading. Okay. Oh, you lied. Okay. Yeah, give us the countdown, please. We are live. It says now live. Hi, live. Hi, live. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. So I suppose uh, we should introduce ourselves before we do this. We're going to do a read through of a book called The Mad Mages Academy, which is uh, one of the new Endless Quest books that's coming out from Candlewick Press and uh, Kings Road Publishing in the UK um, uh, on September 3rd, I believe, this year coming up. And you can already place pre-orders or stuff on Amazon and all your independent bookstores and all that kind of stuff you can go to already. Uh, but we're going to do a read through of that with our wonderful staff of adventurers that we have here. And let's go through, let's start with Strix. How about you introduce yourself real quick? Sure, but I'm going to be the devil's advocate really quick. So go this is a choose your own adventure book, right? It is. Well, so it's is choose your own adventure is a trademark of another company. So we call okay. them Endless Quest Books, which is the trademark that we use, or Pick a Path. But yeah, they're in the choose your own adventure style. Okay. So, so it is technically a game. We're playing a game. It is a game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But there, there's no randomness involved. It's all <laughs> what you guys are deciding to do, right? Choice related. Okay, got it. Now I introduce myself. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Strix. You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Strix, S-T-R-I-X. Uh, I am a project narrative director at Hidden Path Entertainment. I do narrative for games, all kinds of games, my own games, other people's games. Uh, Bluebeard's Bride is one that I came out with this last year. It's super scary. You should check it out. And I'm very excited to uh, play through Matt's twisting story. Cool. Stephanie, how about yourself? Hi, I'm Stephanie. I work actually here at Candlewick and uh, not much to say on my end. I work in the marketing department and we love, love, love these books. And I love D&D. I did it when I was younger and I don't have a D&D group now, but I'm, I'm looking for one. So, um, but yeah, I'm very excited. I was not allowed to read these so that I wouldn't spoil myself. So now I'm ready. I'm very excited. <laughs> and Marty, how about you? Who are you? Uh, I'm the author's eldest. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Marty Forbeck. Um, <laughs> Where are you going to college? I'm a college student. There we go. You're going to college. Where are you going to college? I'm at UW Madison. And what do you do there? Actually, I'm just putting you in the spot so I can ask these questions. What? <laughs> uh, is this an interview? I, I study at UW Madison. Um, uh, I suppose currently unemployed. <laughs> cool is considered uh, full time employment, right? Yeah. Uh, I've done some work for um, the Shotguns and Sorcery um role playing game role playing game um that's been unreleased but oh, it's actually coming out shipping the back well, I mean, the, the the book just shipped but um uh the, the the stuff i wrote is still unreleased yes that's true yeah soon 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 all right so what we're going to do is we're going to read through the mad mages academy now this is a book that's set in uh under mountain which is the place under water deep in the Forgotten Realms, which is this uh, wonderful place that's part of uh, the, the main Dungeons and Dragons setting, right? Um, if you see me looking over to the side, it's because that's where the people are. My script is right here, so I'll try to look at you as I'm reading. But um, So I'm going to read a short section of the text, and then at the end of that, we'll get to a decision point where then you guys will argue as to what you want to do. Basically, you're the three voices inside the big character's head. Uh, you're a rogue that has been, uh, well, you'll, you'll see as you go, but you're a rogue who's been assigned to do something uh, pretty silly, so or dangerous at the very least. So. All right. Pages, page one says, you're an idiot. Well, you're a great thief, the kind of swashbuckling rogue that bards might someday sing epic ballads about, but recent evidence points to the fact that you may not be as sharp as even the knife in your belt. Fact number one, you agreed to steal something from the mad mage Hallister, one of the most dangerous wizards to ever darken the Sword Coast. Most thieves would have turned down the gig at the first mention of Hallister's name, but you didn't hesitate over that for even a second. Fact two, the thing you agreed to steal was Hallister's spell book. As powerful as the Mad Mage is, the theory goes that his spell book must be crammed to bursting with pages filled with notations and secrets behind his most amazing spells. Fact number three, according to the people who hired you to steal that spell book, it's safely hidden away in... Dwemer Core 
an Academy the Mad Mage set up so he could train the next generation of evil wizards to work for him. Fact number four, the Mad Mage's Academy is located on the ninth level of the massive, massive dungeon known as Undermountain, which riddles through Mount Waterdeep all the way from the magical metropolis of Waterdeep itself that sits atop it down to the roots of the mountain. And that's enough to convict you of being foolish for sure, if not outright stupid. Still, you took the job because you thought you might be able to pull it off. And if you do, you'll make yourself a legend throughout Waterdeep and beyond. You came up with a plan so crazy, it just might work. You decided to sneak your way into Dweamer Corps by posing as a wizard who is interested in studying at Hallister's Academy. Once you get in through the door, you hope to find the spell book, snatch it, and run off with it before anyone's the wiser. With luck, you'll be back in Waterdeep rolling in golden glory before the Mad Mage even knows his favorite spell book has gone missing. So far, so good. You started at a Waterdeep Inn called the Yawning Portal for the giant well in its basement that leads straight into Undermountain. From there, you worked your way all the way down to the legendary dungeon's ninth level, doing your best to avoid any other sorts of entanglements, no matter how tempting they might have been. And now you find yourself standing outside the entrance to the Mad Mage's Academy. You walk down the hallway until it opens up into a large room with a higher arch ceiling covered from one end to the other with bright mosaics. You squint up at images of wand-wielding wizards engaged in stunning magical duels. A withered, disembodied arm severed long ago from its owner by its elbow and now floating before you in midair points at you as you enter the room and motions for you to stop. Not wanting to see what the hand might be able to do to you, you comply. A moment later, a man with a long mane of white hair and an even longer, bushier white beard sweeps into the room. I am Hallister Black Cloak, Master of Dwemer Corps, he says. Welcome to my academy. What business might you have you here? You point up at the hand still floating in the middle of the room. Um, what's the story behind that? Hallister chuckles to himself. <laughs> that belonged to a wizard named Manshoon. He thought he was a much better duelist than it turned out was true. Now, answer my question. Why are you here? Isn't it obvious, you say, with as much panache as you can muster? I'm a young wizard in training, and I'd like to apply to study here at your academy. The mage narrows his eyes at you, madness dancing in his pupils. You don't look like much of a wizard, whatever that means. Are you absolutely sure about that? Now, you have three choices. You can charge into the school, you can attack Hallister, or you can apply to the school. What would you like? So many things are you going to <laughs> like? It's you a lot to hit you with, right? <laughs> crawl through a well to get to the ninth level of the school? Not even the entrance. You just show up <laughs> and you you're manage like, to work your way down. And basically, there's a whole adventure there you could go through. That's part of the whole D and D. Like yeah. all these are based upon D and D adventures, right? They're mm -hmm. published. Uh, because they, of course, want to feature that, and then the kids can go play those when they get older and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But um, So you manage to get your way all the way down there, you know, sneak past all the different dangerous things, emerge unscathed, and now you're ready to apply to the school. But as you get there, you're like, I don't know if this whole applying to a school thing is going to work. <laughs> um, also, like, his spell book is not going to be guarded because he's mad, uh, and, like, the other students are going to attack you, and you're in the middle of a mountain. You can't escape. Like, who thought this was a good idea? Well, as the as the beginning of the book says, you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> already laid it out for us. <laughs> okay, what do you guys think? All right, what were the what were the options again? I feel the like they were charge into the school, which basically okay. means like, oh hey, I'm sorry, <laughs> right past him, right? <laughs> or uh, attack him because hey, he's right there in front of you. You got a sword. You could maybe you know take him out before he could do anything. Of course, he is one of the most powerful wizards in the entire world, but you know. You never know. Um, or you could apply to the school, which was your original plan, which is to say, hey, you know, uh, yeah, actually, I <clears throat> am a wizard and see if you can actually bluff your way through this. I mean, I think you should, like, uh, you know, buy some time by applying to the school. Maybe we can count on his madness to be uh, unorthodox about how we apply and get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna have to go with that because everything else feels like I'm giving away my cover right away and it's just we're done. We'll be done. <laughs> yeah. Lean into the bluff. Yeah. Lean into the bluff. Okay. <laughs> I okay. think we have a unanimous decision there, which is yeah. good because I, I don't want to spoil things for you, but a lot of this book ends in, in sudden death. So Great. um uh, the <laughs> as reason long as we're not dead, ends, we're good. <laughs> no, the reason I do that in a book like this, there's like 26 different endings in this book. 
and you want them to be exciting, right? But you also want them to be like, oh, I died. Let me see what else I can do and go back. You go back to where you had the choice and then try to do something fun. Um, and I tried to make every one of the endings, even if they uh, end in terrible, sudden, miserable, graphic, awful death, to be entertaining, right? Ah, so the so whole idea is to be fun to read, even when you die. <laughs> you know? Sorry. We'll see what happens. Okay. Better than Bandersnatch. It's already better than Bandersnatch. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to talk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so you say, I'm gonna to apply to the school. And uh, of course, I'm sure you say, what young wizard wouldn't want to study under the legendary Halister Black Cloak? I consider it an honor that you didn't vaporize me the moment I crossed the threshold into your school. Halister strokes his beard, amused. <laughs> the day is still young yet. You laugh off the implied threat and hope you don't sound as nervous as you are. So um, what do I need to do to get started here, you ask? Cast a spell, kill a monster, go on a quest? We don't bother with such things here, Halister says. We simply administer a simple test to see if you're good material for our academy. It's not the ACT or SAT, I promise. <laughs> oh, thank God. Are you nod, thank hoping you that you could somehow skip out on that part, is you don't know how well you're going to be able to fake being an actual wizard, seeing as how you don't know how to cast any spells. If you're going to bluff your way throughout this, though, you can't show an instant hesitation. So you say, so uh, when do we get started? Right away. With a wave of his hand, the arm floating above him retreats to a distant corner of the room. I'm sure you've had a long journey here, though, and would probably like to freshen up. Oh, how kind could you? You open your mouth to claim that you don't need to bother with such trivial things, but Hallister dismisses your overeager protest. Don't be silly. We want to make sure you're rested and sharp before we administer the exam. You wouldn't believe how many people fail it after insisting they're absolutely fine and ready to start right away. Do yourself a favor and avail yourself of our hospitality. It's freely offered and given with no strings attached. The wizard's tone tells you he won't allow you to say no, despite how much you'd rather not get settled in. If you unpack your things, then you'll have to gather them up before you leave or just abandon them, which you'd rather not do. Despite that, you give him a grateful nod and gesture for him to lead the way into the school, if you insist. Hallister snorts and then turns to lead you back to the door via which he entered the room. You enter a long hallway that leads straight off to the east, Another hallway spurs off into the south, but he leads you past that to take the next turn to the right into another long hallway. There's He's a big map right. you can go Remember through that. and actually do this stuff if you actually have the adventure. Which... Have this one is lined okay. with three doors on either side before it comes to a dead end. He takes you halfway down the hall and opens the door on the right and then motions for you to enter the small room bottom. This hall features one of our two student dormitories, he tells you. Conveniently, this room is empty at the moment, so you can rest here. In fact, if you make it into the school, this room will be yours. Feel free to take as long as you like. I'm sure I'll be ready to go soon, you say, as you slide past Hallister into the room. It's a decent sized and contains a bed, a dresser, and chest, along with a desk and chair. Everything you would need for your studies if you happen to be an actual wizard. An ever-burning torch flickers above the desk and a row of five tubes lines the wall nearest the door. Hallister notices you examining them. Those are part of our pneumatic tube messaging system. You can put notes in the proper tubes and air elementals carry them right where they're needed. The one labeled headmaster's office goes right to me. And when you're ready to get started, just let me know. Thank you for your hospitality, you say as you stifle a big yawn. I suppose the trip here has really tired me out. Since I came here to study under you, it only makes sense to take your advice, doesn't it? Hallister laughs. You'd be surprised how many of our prospective students can't even manage to figure that out. With that, he closes the door and leaves. You hustle over to the thick door and put your ear to it so you can listen to him leave. When you're confident that he's gone, you walk over to the bed and sit on it for a moment to contemplate your options. Hallister wasn't wrong. You are tired, but you have a job to do. The question is, how should you do it? Should you take a nap and wait for him to return to ask after you? Or should you take advantage of the fact that Hallister doesn't seem to be watching you right now so you can wander around the academy without worrying about him looking over your shoulder? You stare at the door for the moment as you make up your mind. So your choices are wander around or wait. Hmm. Okay, so in a classic B and E, you want to yes. get in and out as fast as possible. That's like thievery 101. I don't think we should take a nap. No, I don't think so either. I feel like maybe we could run around before he comes back. I feel like that's kind of like if he's looking for us, then we can, it's fine. But like if he's not, then we might as well. I agree. Also, I agree. also, this could all be part of the test, and so we don't know what he's going to do 
to us when we're asleep. It's a trick test. <laughs> Marty? I'm very nervous about it, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do is thieving. Marty's a sensible part of the conscience yeah. system through the back of the I, But who, who wouldn't want to take a nap, though? I feel like in yeah, general. It's been a long trip to <laughs> But no, we need, to, we need to scope it out. I feel like we need to scope it out. Yeah, like in the middle of doing crimes, I'm not really in a nap. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you got experience with this. I don't know. Well, no. <laughs> Remember, I never got caught. There you go. That's why you're <laughs> no. All right. Uh, so you can't just sit around this dorm room waiting for Alistair to come fetch you. The longer you wait, the better the chance of someone has of uncovering you as a magicless fraud. See, so there you go. Mm -hmm. Sidling up to the door, you listen at to see if there's anybody moving in the hallway outside. Believing yourself to be alone, you open the door and are shocked to find a squid-faced human standing outside your door, stock still. Mm. Only its tentacles <laughs> move, silently writhing at the bottom, bottom of its cephalopod face, right where its mouth should be. I pronounce cephalopod properly. Wait, is it an illithid or is it a human? I am the mind flare cephalos, okay. a voice says. <laughs> a voice that is not in your own, that is not your own, says in your head. So telepathically. I am a student here at Duimo Corps. It takes you but a moment to recover from your surprise. You give the tall, pale-skinned creature a shallow bow in response. Good to meet you. I'm applying, your purpose here is self-evident. The mind flare glances in both directions. Accompany me to my quarters so that we might speak in private. It doesn't seem worth it to point out that Cephalosk is speaking in a way that's impossible to overhear, or so you think. Uh, instead, you just follow the creature across the hallway into its own room. No. The room is a mirror image of yeah, could be a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> the room is a mirror image of your own, although it's clearly more lived in. There's a bed in one corner that has no pillow and an overflowing desk that has been jammed against the other wall. The walls are damp with moisture, just as slick as cephalos skin, and they're lined with shelves filled with books, scrolls, and jars filled with a thick translucent liquid, in each of which floats a perfectly preser preserved brain. Those are for me, Cephalos points at the brains. Everyone asks about them. <laughs> Why are you studying them, you ask, curious. Uh, the mind flayer's facial tentacles quiver with a slight laughter. Oh, oh, I don't study them. I eat them. You do your best to suppress your revulsion at that mental image, but you're sure you fail badly. They permit that here? They prefer me eating these preserved brains to dining on fresh ones, I'm sure. And then we have to go to page 22. That's the way you do these. Sometimes you'll get a choice and just take you to the next page. I suppose I have to agree with that, you say. It's best for the academy. Cephalos stares at you with his black, unblinking eyes, and you wonder if he's thinking about how your brain might taste too. You clear your throat. <clears throat> so uh, why did you bring me here? The mind flare closes the door to the room. The place suddenly seems a lot smaller. You notice the stink of the place now. It smells like an underground sea. I need your help and you need mine. How do you mean, you ask suspicious? I have read your mind. You're here to steal Hallister's spell book. I can help you with that. You glance at the door, wondering if you should make a break for it. I don't know what you're talking about. Deny it out loud, smart, but we both know the truth. Exasperated at having been found out so soon, you decide to be direct. What do you want? I am having troubles with one of the other students. He needs to be eliminated. His name is Spite Harrowdale. Why don't you take care of that yourself? I, I would love to, but as a student, I can't be seen to be moving against another student. There are rules. You, however, are not a student yet. Second, Spit has, uh, Spite has a bodyguard with him at all times, a half-ogre brute named Dumara. She is incredibly strong, and both the minds have proven impervious to my attempts to probe them. So why me? As a newcomer, a stranger, Spite and Damara will not be prepared for you. Also, if you eliminate another student, that would help you get into the school. You realize I don't actually want to attend classes here, right? <laughs> the mind flare chortles, sending his facial tentacles quaking. Of course, I forgot you are sure to leave as soon as you get what you are after. Even better, if you help me, I will show you where Hallister keeps his spell book and then assist you in your escape. So now you got to another choice point. Questions are, do you refuse his offer or do you play along for now? 
Oh, okay. So he's going to plant like an illithid baby in your brain and then it's going to come busting out of your body. Like, <laughs> okay. We're talking about illithids here. Also, if you don't do what he says, he's just going to rat you out. You don't have a choice. But also, as soon as you kill someone, <laughs> he's going to be like, cool, done. You're not a student. I can get rid of you too now. There's no wins here, Matt. I'm sorry that you seem to have found yourself in an uncertain <laughs> situation. <laughs> okay. I feel like. If we help him out, we get away from him for now and then possibly do something else that he doesn't know. Obviously, I have no idea how this is going to yes. play out. But if we can get away from him and not, you know, take him off right away, I feel like we should maybe go that route. He burst <laughs> into the spider web. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. If I've, if I've learned anything from uh old computer role-playing games it's agree to take the morally questionable side quest and then never complete it <laughs> <laughs> well put well put all right so play along for now turn to page 40. let's see flip 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 pretend i'm flipping through a paper book what's on page 13 is it anything particularly extra uh, spooky? i'd have to flip i could do that in a little bit <laughs> uh, I, I did not do the thing where there's one page you can't turn to Right. Ah. Or maybe this could have been your house of leaves, Matt. I know. <laughs> I, see, there's one of Marty's favorite books. He'll love that room. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that book too. Uh, okay, so Cephalos creeps you out, and the thought of lining up the uh, Mind Flayer's next couple meals for, for it disturbs you. But at least the creature won't be feeding on you. I sense your hesitation. It is not unwarranted. Hey, hey, wait. I also sense your decision. It is good to be working with you. Let us get started right away. The mind flare opens up the door to its room and ushers you into the hallway beyond. No time like the present. You wipe your brow in relief. The room was somehow stifling and chilly at the same time, and you're glad to be free of it. Cephalos points to a door on the up the hallway on the same side as the room Halisher left you to cool your heels in. That is Spite's room. You should start looking for him there. And where are you going to be? I will remain in my room and await the results of your attempt to eliminate Spite. If you succeed, I will aid you in your quest to find Hallister's spell book. You could help me first instead. You would flee the first chance you had. Fine, you concede. Go hide in your room till I'm done. The mind flayer slips back into his place and silently closes the door behind him. You take a deep breath and then saunter casually over to the door Cephalos pointed at before. It's closed, but you can hear two people inside chatting. You knock on the door. And a half-ogre, whose head scrapes against the top of the door's frame, opens it. Yes? I'm sorry, I have to come up with a different voice for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she says in a low voice. I'm applying to be a student here, you say. I thought I should introduce myself to the others. Let him in, a voice says behind Dumara, who makes a fine door all by herself. She moves aside grudgingly, and you squeeze past her, and, past her into the room. It's the same size and shape as the room Hallister puts you into. There's an extra oversized bed stuffed into a corner, which makes things a bit tighter, and a roll-top desk stuffed between them. A boy just on the edge of adolescence bounds over from the smaller bed. I'm spite, he says, with a wild cheer. So glad to meet you. Are you here to register as a student, too? Dumara grunts at the boy for his unbridled enthusiasm. You just nod your head at the kid. Uh, maybe I hear good things about the school. Uh, it's all right, but there are all sorts of other cool things here, too. I can't wait to see them all. Like what? Oh, Alistair Spellbook, Spite says with unrestrained, unrestrained glee. It's a real legend around these parts. I mean, all the wizards have spell books. I have one of my own, and I'm sure you do too. But just imagine how many spells such an ancient and powerful wizard must have stuffed away in his spell book. It would be enough to fill an entire library. I hadn't thought of it that way, you admit. Well, I, I want to get my hands on it, even if only to flip through its pages for a bit. Uh, can you help me? He looks up at you with hopeful eyes. Kill him. Don't him. <laughs> it's a lie. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, and how would I do that? You can't believe your luck. If you could help Spite steal the spell book, then you could just turn around and swipe it from him. He keeps it in a secret room, very well guarded. To, to get to it, I need someone to distract Worm Riddle. She's the night hag who helps run the school. And if you could do that for me, I'll do whatever I can to help you get into the school. Then we'll be best friends too. Dumara looms over you while Spite awaits your reply. So your choices are attack them or work with Spite. 
attack them is my vote. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. This is a facade <laughs> for a reason. Like, this is a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> I feel like it's two against one. one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it more than the last one? Yeah. But I feel like it's two against one. Like, granted, it's a, a small, very excitable person and they're giant, like, bodyguard but they are looming over us right now and i'm very the bodyguard is in like a small room and can't swing very hard uh, also like... true though but what if there's just like a straight down like smash done like we're we're, we're <laughs> we dodge Marty, what do you think uh, attack them <laughs> want to attack them definitely a trap so, uh, okay. we're well, Marty, them like you know your dad's mind best what do you <laughs> okay so Here's what I think it is, is we go with them. And then the next thing after that is the choice, which actually gets us to the correct ending. <laughs> That's that would ending? kill us now, but I do want to do it. <laughs> which well, are we do? playing to win or are we playing for fun? Oh, both, hopefully. <laughs> what well, do we want to do? Choosing, you got the deciding vote here. We got one to attack, <laughs> one to go, to go away. Attack. I mean, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> a trap. Uh, it's a trap that we have to walk into and then walk out of. But you, you want to attack? I just want to confirm this. You want to attack the. That's the dad voice boy that says we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, maybe we shouldn't attack. Maybe we shouldn't attack. <laughs> no, no, no. You, I think you've made it. like, oh, okay, well. <laughs> Matt, you're giving us the are you sure you want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Uh, one of the best parts is we can always say, oops, I screwed that up and go back to the save point. Yeah. The dream sequence. Um, <laughs> let's see. You, that sounds like a fine idea, you lie. I'd be happy to help you. All right, Spite says as he dashes to the exit, thrilled and ready to embark on what seems like a wonderful adventure. Dumara turns to open the door for the boy. The moment the half-ogre turns her back on you, you slip your sword from its scabbard and attack. You drive the tip of your blade to the half-ogre's meaty back, believing that if you manage to take her out fast, the boy should be easy to dispatch. Then you could turn them over to Cephalos and be done with this horrible bit. Oh, no, that's the mistake. The boy's not going to be easy to dispatch. Okay. And... <laughs> Yumara cries out in pain and arches her back as you run her through. You withdraw your blade, ready to attack Spite, who had turned around to gape at you in horror. Instead of falling over dead, though, Dumara spins around to face you, growing larger and bluer as she does. She roars at you in both pain and fury, baring her teeth and exposing her sharp black claws the size of a bear's. She's no half-ogre. She's a giant demon known as an oni. You realize right then that you've made a <laughs> terrible mistake. I knew it. <laughs> um, okay, then turn to page 55 for the... For your gruesome death. The gruesome conclusion <laughs> to this adventure. Um, Let's see, page 55. Wait, you shouted desperation. I didn't know. I was just trying to help Cephalosk. <laughs> You'll pay for that, Spite says as he steps forward. His voice deepens as he transforms from a boy into a white bearded man. You have no idea who you're trifling with. Your jaw drops. This isn't my fault. You were lying to me the whole time. You set me up. We were going to steal a spell book, not murder anyone. The Oni steps in front of Spite, protecting him from you again and she flexes her claws. That's changed, she tells you. You open your mouth to protest, but the Oni begins slashing to you to ribbons with her claws. You beg her for mercy, but she doesn't have any. All you can do is scream in agony and terror. Once the fight is over, as you lay dying, you hear Spite say, drag the body into the hall and leave it on, lying on Cephalosk's door. Maybe that'll distract people long enough for us to be able to snatch that book. You feel the Oni grab you by your heels, and then you're gone. All right, let's go back <laughs> the right way. Uh, 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 um, God, where were we now? That's the real question. <laughs> ah, I should have marked the page. Oh, no. <laughs> let's see. We started on page 26. Um, let's see. Fortunately, I can actually... Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Marty, you totally called out your dad correctly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he even gave us the dad voice. <laughs> the dad we're on page 25. <laughs> so 
it's a side quest and a side quest now. Just That's go deeper and deeper and deeper. And, deeper. Yeah. <laughs> and then not do any of them. Okay, here we go. All right, so you, now you want to say, okay, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. Let's work with Spike. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this goes to page 92, deep into the book. There's 128 pages in these books, so 92 is further along. Although there's actually an ending early in the book too, so they, they, they're all shuffled up. I'd be happy to help you out, you tell Spite. Going on a spell, bunk, a spell book hunt sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, it'll be more than that, says Spite. Just think of all the things we'll learn. He's goofy. Yeah, lying old man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lying old man pretending to be a goofy kid. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm not sure I have the time for it right now. You give Spite a reluctant shrug. I mean, I'm supposed to be waiting to take the school's entrance exam. Spite and Damara look at each other and then break out laughing. <laughs> Don't worry, Dumara says in a booming voice. Oh, there is no entrance exam, Spite says with a grin. Hallister just waits for you to sneak out of your room and interact with the other students, <laughs> which can be fatal. If you survive, you're in. That may not be the craziest thing you've ever heard about any kind of school, or that may be, but somehow you're not all that surprised. All right, then, you say to Spite, I'm in. Excellent, Spite trundles out the door with Dumara in his wake. You follow it, you hope to be a safe distance. Off we go on a grand adventure, Spite says. Grand adventure, echoes Dumara. You let yourself grin along with them, but secretly at your great luck. Turn to page 60, 60, 60, 60. Somewhere in there, 60, 60. The Tower of Lies. Exactly. <laughs> about to see. You are a rogue and you're trying to rob people. So there we go. You walk along the hallway and reach a room where there's a door marked Headmaster's Office. Knock, please. You wonder if the spell book you're after might be in there, but Spite leads you straight past it. The door to the room is slightly ajar, and you pause for just a moment to peer through it. You see Hallister himself sitting at a large desk, scribbling something on a scroll with a long feathered quill. He pauses in his work for a moment, and you hurry on before he looks up to see you. All right. Here's the plan, Spite says, as he leads you through a set of doors to the south, and it's straight through a wall that gives way in front of you like it's not even there. I'm going to lead you straight to Worm Riddle's private chambers. All you have to do is go in there, find her, and keep her occupied for a bit. You don't think Hallister is going to stop you if you march into his office and try to take his book? <laughs> Spite snorts. He has a spell book in his office, but that's just a dec decoy. I'm after the real thing. He keeps that in a far more secret place. You walk right through another wall and you find yourself in a wide hall. At the end of it, you can see a ghostly figure that looks like it's searching for something on the far wall. Ignore it, Spite says without breaking stride. It's just another illusion. Apparently they're all over the place here. He re leads you right up to the image and the ghost of the young adventurer doesn't seem to notice you at all. She just keeps on examining the wall. Spite turns to the right and spreads his arms towards a set of doors standing there. This is Worm Riddle's place. You keep her busy and Dumara and I will take care of the rest. Good luck. The boy and his half-ogre friend hustle back down the hallway and disappear into a passage on the left, about halfway down. So now, your choices are sneak off after Spite or enter Worm Riddle's quarters the way he wants you to. Okay, now's the time we should go, right, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Stephanie? That would be telling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like... If we go in, we'll get caught and caught into another web of like another side quest of things to help other people out. I feel like we should follow them. Yeah. Party? Yeah. Yeah. No, right, I, I mean, walk yeah. into the trap and then walk out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you sneak off after yeah. Spike, correct? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Turn to Spite the male wizard with the demon. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Which you now know is, is bad news. So. <laughs> All right, 73. Dealing with Worm Riddle seems like a bad idea. If she was that easy to distract, Spite would have had Damara handle that task instead. Besides, you're not here to get into the school. You want that spell book. You pat down the hallway after Spite and Damara, moving as silently as you can and taking care to remain out of their sight. You follow them through a couple of classrooms and a supply room guarded by a couple of spec spectators, which are large floating eyeballs with four prehensile stalks that end in smaller eyes too, kind of like... Uh, half <laughs> a sign on the shelf reads do not remove supplies without a headmaster black cloaks written cons written consent the spectators watch you closely but do not move against you as you leave you find yourself in a long bent hallway 
and you follow it to the right until it comes to a door. Beyond that sits a large room in the center of which is a well that leads down to the next level of Undermount, the best as you can tell. To the south, there's another hallway where you hear Spite's footsteps stop. You peer around the corner and see Spite and Dumaras duck into an alcove toward the end of the hall. A moment later, Dumara emerges with Hallister right behind her. The two of them head for a door at the end of the hall and disappear through it. Suspicious, you pat up to the door and listen at it for a moment. Clearly, that wasn't a Hallister you saw. It had to be Spite in disguise. But why would he have to masquerade as the headmaster? Is there something in the next room that would attack anyone who wasn't there with Hallister? Should you disguise yourself as Hallister too? You don't have the magic for that, but you are pretty handy with more mundane means of masquerade. But if you show up as Hallister and Spite shows up as Hallister, is that going to confuse things and cause problems instead? You're not sure what to do. You only know that Spite and Dumara are getting farther away by the second. So your choices are disguise yourself as Hallister or don't bother with the disguise at all. I mean, I'm a little bit of a chaos monkey and I think it would be fun to disguise ourselves as Hallister. (laughs) Anyone else? I'm actually going to write down the page number this time. So I'm going to have to go back and change. Uh, yeah. back. So you're expecting a failure here. <laughs> I always expect failure. <laughs> that must have been a fun household to live in. <laughs> yeah, really is. <laughs> All right, let's 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 dress up as Hallister. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, are you on board with that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, disguise yourself as Hallister. Turn to page 82. Oh, boy. Let's see, 82 says, oh, you died. No, nope, never mind. <laughs> um, if Spike had gone to the trouble to look like Hallister, then perhaps you should do the same. Fortunately, in the course of your career, you become a decent disguise artist in your own right. It's a lot easier to walk into a place in a mask than it is to climb through a window, after all. You dig through your pack and find a white wig and a beard to sl- and slip them on. It's a good thing that so many male wizards stick with that kind of look as they get older. The hair won't, alone won't be enough to fool anyone, though, so you also don a mask to cover your skin to make you look more like Hallister, old and wizened by his years. It takes longer than you would like, but eventually you feel like you've done the best you can. In an effort to catch up with Spite and Damar, you bolt through the doors at the end of the hall and discover another hall that turns to the right. You follow it through into a large square room with a statue of Hallister standing in each corner. If the statues bear a passable resemblance to Hallister, then it seems that your own efforts are at least likely not to embarrass you. Even if Hallister's best friend was to discover you looking like this, you might feel, you feel like you might be able to fool them, at least on a dark, moonless night. You glance around, but don't see Spite or Dumar anywhere. There's only one way out of the room, through a passage just to the right of the one where you entered. Unless there's a secret ex- exit elsewhere, that must be how they left. Worried that you might have already lost the pair of them for good, you decide to chance the passageway and you slink up it quietly as it winds off to the right. Moving faster, you turn a corner just in time to see Hallister, spite in disguise for sure, follow Dumara through a door into a well-lit room. The door closes behind them and you sidle up to it and wait. At least they haven't gotten entirely away from you, but chasing them right into the room would only ensure they catch you following them. Forcing yourself to be patient, you start counting to 100 to give them a moment to move on or if they're stopping there to become engrossed in whatever it is they've found. Then you plan to peek through the door in a moment and see what's happening, hopefully without giving them a chance to spot you in the act. That's when you hear someone in the room start to scream and all your plans get tossed away. You consider waiting until the screaming stops, at which point you can enter the room and maybe just pick through the mess and move on, but your curiosity gets the better of you. No. (laughs) Uh, So you turn to page 89. You throw open the door and see that the screams are coming from Spite, who's being pulled up into the air and then slammed down into the hard stone floor by an invisible force. It seems to be directed by a giant skull with blazing eyes set into a door on the far side of the room. Your first instinct is to go charge in and attack the skull while it's busy with Spite. Before you can manage that, though, a rough-hewn statue of iron steps in front of the door and reaches out to slam it shut in your face. But before that can happen, a large blue screen skin creature who shouts oddly in Dumara's voice, remember you don't actually remember this part, <laughs> ah, yeah. smashes into the moving statue, clawing at the metal thing with its long and vicious black talons. Help us! Spite shouts as he sees you. You wonder for an instance if he thinks you're the school's headmaster, because of course you're disguised as Alistair, but he shares that by telling you, that's the worst disguise I've ever seen! How did you get back to the <laughs> 
you have no idea what a Yugoloth is, but perhaps it's better that way. They're kind of demon that was protecting the last chamber, which you guys cleverly avoided by disguising yourself. As... You're right. Yes. Yeah. You have no idea what Yugoloths are, but right now you have a decision to make. If you call for help, the whole caper is blown. But if you don't, Spite might, di might die. But, you know, maybe that's okay. <laughs> so you're, you have three choices here. They are call for help, wait to see what happens, or save Spite. I would wait to see what happens. Yeah, I think so too, only because if we call for help, someone else will find out that we've all been dressing up as the headmaster or helping them. Well, okay, say. here's the thing though. We don't know the rest of the way to the book or how far it is or what it might entail. And I guess we kind of need him alive to do that unless we want to chance it on our own, but we're idiots clearly. So I just trust him <laughs> figure that out. First line of the book, we already know we're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I don't know, maybe we should save him. Marty? This is the first, this is the first one where I genuinely don't know <laughs> what what the correct answer is. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go like pseudo-psychologist here. I think okay. Matt is a good person. And therefore, <laughs> unconsciously, he's gonna want us to choose the good person choice, which is to save this little jerk. <laughs> Yes. And he already uh, knows that it's us. Yeah. So it's not like we have to keep up any rules. Like, uh, like the target audience is 10 year olds. We want to teach 10 year olds to be good. So I'm going with Save Spite. I would agree, actually. I think Save Spite, from, from what, even from what I've read of your adult fiction, I, I think that, <laughs> that, is, that is very on point. Stephanie, what do you feel? Yeah, let's, let's save that little twerp. <laughs> All right, you guys are right. I'm a sucker for a hero. There you go. <laughs> Let's see how this turns out for you, though. Because, um, you know, sometimes I'm a little darker than I mean to be. Um, okay. Aren't we all? <laughs> there we go. As foolish as it might be, you just can't abandon Spite and Demara to die. If you run for help, there's no way to get back to them in time either. There has to be something you can do to save them here and now. On an impulse you hope to live to regret, you slip into the room just before the metal monster slams the door shut behind you. Now you're trapped in there with the others, whether you like it or not. The monster comes straight for you and swings a fist the size of a war hammer as your head, at your head. You dodge beneath it and scramble out of the way as fast as you can. Dumara takes advantage of you distracting the creature to leap onto its back and begin dismantling it. She tears at its shoulders, peeling plates off it with her bared claws. She even manages to rip off an arm and tosses it aside to clatter across the dungeon stone floor. The metal monster reaches back and grabs Dumara with its remaining arm, pulling her over its shoulder in a great wrestling move. She pushes <laughs> Dumara into the ground and begins to pound her over and over again. Spurred to action by this horrific sight, you leap at the monster from behind and shove your blade inside of it. Rather than trying to stab it over and over, which would seem like a useless way to attack a beast with no flesh, you use the blade as a lever and start trying to pry pieces of the creature off it. You wrestle off part of its side and then finally manage to wrench away its head, which bounces away from you with a series of hollow clangs. This finally causes the creature to collapse into a pile of wreckage. Unfortunately, it crumbles to pieces right on top of Dumara, who wasn't doing all that well to begin with. Save Spite, Dumara says to you with her final breath. You spin about and dive over toward the boy just as he's about to crash into the floor again. You remember he's being smashed up and down. On your knees, you catch him in your arms and cradle him there, giving him a chance to catch his breath. Rather than taking the time to thank you, Spite finally casts a spell on the skull, one that he's been trying to complete the entire time the thing is battering him about. The skull goes dark and slack, and Spite nearly falls over in relief. Turn to page 102. Yay! Yay. <laughs> no Arms time to chat, Spite says. We need to get that door open before the skull powers back up again. I'm on it, you say. You reach the door and see that it has nine separate locks on it. You try to figure out where a key could go into them so you might be able to pick them, but none of them feature a hole. They're magically locked, you say. Each one of them requires a spell to open. Step back, Spite says as he points his wand at the door. He then rattles off a series of spells, each of which 
produces a knocking sound so loud, you wonder if Halister might be able to hear it in his quarters on the other side of this level of the dungeon. <laughs> As the ninth spell sounds, you grab the door and haul it open. There's only a single desk and chair in the room, both bare. Spite rushes past you and rips open the desk's single drawer. Found it, he crows with glee. As crazy as it might sound, this all seems too easy to you. Halister wouldn't just let anyone pick up his spell book, right? But if you let Spite have it now, you might never be able to take it for yourself. So now you reach another decision point. Do you let Spite have the spell book for now, or do you grab it from him right away? We still know he's an old, powerful wizard, yep. but his demon is dead. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he just got whomped, and he used at least one of his spell slots. No, wait, not 10 spell slots. Well, he used a wand for the other stuff. Oh, okay, fine. He used a wand. For the D&D players out here, he used a wand. Yeah. Okay. He was ready. Uh, I mean, that might be the time. We're still evil. We're still a thief. We're in a den of evil. Like, literally, the, the wizards, it, there's an illithid here. So, like, now might be the time? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Second fake book. It's a trap. Let him have it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go with Marty. I feel like maybe we should let him have it because then if he still has it, what if we're trapped in there? He's the one that got us in there and unlocked everything. So mm -hmm. we might still need him to get out and then we can just take all him right. out. This is, just, <laughs> this is going a little far. It's all I'm saying. <laughs> Your call, folks. Do we have a... No, I agree. I agree. All right, we have a unanimous decision. We just let him have the spell book, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got to page 118. And there it is. Okay. You decide to let Spite test your suspicions for you. As he reaches into the desk drawer to pick up the spell book, you step out of the room just in case. <laughs> it's mine, Spite says. Hallister's precious spell book is finally all mine. There's a loud woof from inside the room that shakes the walls and knocks the door off one of its hinges. Despite being braced and ready, you still flinch at the noise. After waiting a full five seconds, you peer around the broken door and into the room. Spite is lying there, sprawled across the floor, the spell book still in his right hand. Blood trickles from his nose and ears. As carefully as you can, you creep into the room, still on the lookout for traps. If the past few minutes has taught you anything, it's that Hallister is incredibly protective of his valuables, and you don't want to wind up like Spite. Despite checking the floor, walls, and ceiling for traps, you don't find anything suspicious. There's a chance if you pick up the spell book, it might hurt you like it did spite. But in your experience, such spell traps have to be set, have to be reset first. It's probably safe to pick it up. Turn to page 114. We could also just chop off Spite's hand and then use Spite's hand to pick oh, it up. Oh yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> that's that's a little grim for the uh kind of upset. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry okay. about that. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> tricks, there you go. It's, <laughs> no. All right, you kneel down next to Spite and gingerly take the spell book from his right hand. As you stuff it into a large pocket on the inside of your jacket for safekeeping, Spite's eyes fly open and he reaches out to grab you by the wrist. He tries to say something, but just coughs instead. I'm sure someone will be here to help you soon, you tell him. We made a lot of noise. Get out of here before the skull comes back to life, you idiot, Spite wheezes. <laughs> you leap to your feet. Good luck, you say to him. I'm done for either way. I'd ask you to kill me on your way out if it wouldn't take too long. He has a point, and you don't have any desire to hurt him anyway. He's done enough of that to himself. You head to the door, racing past both Dumara and the broken remains of the metal monster that are scattered all over her. It's not fair, Spike calls as you leave him the room behind. You can't help but agree with him about that. But you've had plenty of bad luck in your life, too. You're not about to argue when some good luck comes your way instead. Quick as you can, you find your way back into the hallway in which you saw Spike disguise himself as Halister. Not that it did him much good against the metal monster of the skull. Footsteps, footsteps thunder your way, so you duck into one of the niches there and hunker down tight in the shadows. This way, Halister shouts after he passes you by. The master is going to be furious. You don't know what he means by that, but you're not going to stop him to ask. Once he and the others have passed you by, you head for the entrance of the academy again. You make it there without incident and bid Dwimokor goodbye. Now you just need to get back to Waterdeep and collect your fee. 
when word of this gets out, your legend will surely grow. The end. That's actually <gasps> <Yay>! that's the <laughs> Yay! Yay! Well done. Good job. <laughs> I was like, where is this going? We're going to get caught. No, no, no. no. That's, that's the best <laughs> ending. Well, there's a, there's a couple good endings that where you don't die. Um, this is one where you actually get deep. There's like two spell books. There's a decoy and the real one. Uh, one, you walk out with the decoy and you're like, oh, yeah, I win. But really, you didn't. Uh, yeah. And this is one where you get the real spell book. Didn't get killed in the process and managed to walk out with it. So well done. Yay! Yes. Yay! Also, you set it up that the real big bad is going to come out after this, too. Yeah. I uh, noticed. And it turns out that the guy who's pretending to be Halister is there is actually not Halister. He's another demon who Halister has hired to uh, run the academy for him. So when Halister gets wind that somebody's stolen his spell book, you know, bad things will happen in the future. Yeah. But fortunately, the story ends right now. <laughs> so you don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. But well, that thank was you guys awesome. all for playing yeah. too. I think that was a wonderful play. <laughs> that too. was really good. Yeah. I'm glad we got the, the good ending. Well, yeah, exactly. we all good endings, but we actually made it through. Who'd have thunk? I mean, I think the uh, the psychological reading and my son here at the same time were like, oh, yeah, we know how he does this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried I was going to have to remember like all the twists and turns and like the five pneumatic knobs and then the three doors. And then I was like, uh, trying uh, to like, <laughs> the details I tossed him because they're in the adventure. And so somebody who's actually has the adventure at home, the, the what is it, the Mad Mage's Mountain or whatever it is, uh, they can actually go through and look and follow the map if they want to, right? That's really cool. Um, cool. Also, if you're a kid, I think it helps get, make you feel more like you're in D&D &D, where it's like, oh, and then it's 10 feet and a door and a twist and whatever, and you're sitting there mapping it out as you go uh, when you actually play the game. So just to kind of give you a flavor of that for when you actually step up to the real role playing game as opposed to reading the books. So there you go. Cool. Yeah. I had awesome. a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, Matt. That was great. And um, I think that's going to be it for us. Uh, don't forget, Endless Quest comes out September 3rd, and you can read more adventures from Matt Forbeck and the other D&D &D books that are there. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Matt. Yay. Thanks, Rex. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a goof. <laughs> I'm just upstairs. You can thank yeah, me. Yeah, I'll give him a hug when we're done here. It's Father's Day tomorrow. <laughs>